Excellent. All right. My name is uh, Oystein. I come from Norway. Norway is a very small country, but we're proud of one thing. We are the first uh, rock where thorium was identified was found in Norway. Identified by a Swede. We don't like to talk about that, but uh, the rock came from Norway for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> Thor Energy is a small private uh, Norwegian company. We started in 2005. Uh, I had less gray hair then, but I've been in the thorium game for eight years now running, and we're still there, and we're doing better than ever. Uh, we've got our hands dirty with uh, thorium. Um, uh, last conference, we stated on stage that we are going to manufacture thorium fuel and put it in a reactor. And I'm very happy to say that we've done that, and I'll show you pictures of that. Uh, Yes, Thor Energy is a small company in a family of companies under a Scatec umbrella. Total in the group, we are 800 employees. We build big solar parks, we build offshore windmill farms, and we started Thor Energy as a feasibility study on understanding uh, what can we do with nuclear, because nuclear has to play a part of the global energy mix. We know how much work it is to build a solar plant, we know what it can do, its limitations. So Thor Energy is a Small company in a family of companies that all work within renewable, climate-neutral energy technology development. And we've been quite successful at showing that uh, efficient innovations happen in small, uh, focused companies rather than large elephant organizations. We did our feasibility study back in 2005 try to look at what is the road ahead for thorium. And all of us in this room, we dream of the thorium nirvana. Thorium in, fission products out, energy out. That's what we all aim for. If you're not from India, one third of you believe in MSRs to take us to nirvana. The other third of you believe in the ADS to take us to nirvana. The other third don't know what to think. But uh, what we think, uh, for sure, is that uh, one variant of the thorium nirvana lies in advanced light water reactors. Reduced moderation, generation 3 plus, generation 4 type reactors where you can uh, utilize the epithermal spectrum to breed positively thorium. But it doesn't start there. It, uh, the, the tree doesn't start with discussing the leaves. It starts with a seed. It starts with evolution. It's not a revolution. So we try to look at what is the most near-term deployment of thorium. How does it make sense in the near to mid-term application? And where does it really start? We heard Areva talk about the different families and the stages and how one family depends on the other. We have to start somewhere. It's not, we don't go straight to the iPhone. It is evolution. So what we set out to do was to, uh, let me see, is that the pointer? To develop thorium for use in existing light water plants. Uh, there's 436 of them in the world, 60 under build. The global light water fuel market is in the order of $15 billion. These new reactors of 61, they all are built to last for 60 years. So thorium is just too good not to be used in this large scale uh, power deployment already instead of focusing on a long-term vision. We've talked about a lot of the good arguments why thorium, uh, why thorium in light water reactors. Of course, it utilizes an abundant resource. A lot of it is above ground as a liability today. A lot uh, is underground, eternally amounts is underground. Higher conversion ratio, uh, increased safety margins during operations because of higher heat conductivity, higher melting point, less fission gas release, and non-soluble in water. So there's safety margins that you add to a light water reactor that can be tra transformed into either higher safety or uh, improved economy. Increased plutonium destruction, this has been pointed out by many, and also building the 233 mine, producing the seed that we need for the thorium nirvana. Uh, it is an evolutionary first step towards the closed uh, cycle. So that's what Thor Energy said. In 2007, we set out our clear strategy that we want to develop technology that enables thorium oxide to be used in light water reactors as the first start of a thorium. And we were happy when the EU in 2011 published our same conclusions four years after, that we need to start in light water reactors and most likely with thorium-plutonium fuel. 
So Thor Energy today, we work with f in four different uh, areas. We got our irradiation campaign. We work on developing new computer tools, both neutronics and fuel performance codes. Uh, we have designed uh, advanced bundles and core designs. The bundle has a different geometry if you, your intention is to burn plutonium versus breed 233. Uh, and advanced pellet designs. We have filed uh, more than a handful of patents in this space. And we're working very hard to make this a commercial type product. Irradiating fuel is very expensive. It costs in the order 100 million NOC to do the irradiation program that we are doing now. We organize this as a consortium, and the name of the consortium is 730. And it relates to experiment number 730 in the Halden reactor, which has operated for 55 years now. So this is experiment number 730. 730 is a consortium of entities supporting this campaign. The objective is not a scientific objective, it's to produce the data needed for a license approval of this fuel into a commercial reactor. We signed the agreements in 2011 and we announced this consortium at last year's conference. And the main partners being Thor Energy, Westinghouse Nuclear Fuels uh, and Fortum, the Finnish utility. So we're very happy to have a, a future user of the thorium-based fuel and a future producer of the fuel. Uh, on board. Then we have some supporting partners, IFE, the National Research Council of Norway, or uh, Research Institution of Norway, NNL from the UK, and the Research Council of Norway, which co-funded this program with a very large grant, the first one in history of Norway using oil money to fund nuclear research. Very exciting for us when we got that. ITU, Joe Sommers and the group uh, is uh, supporting the program. And uh, the thorium powder was supplied by the southern part of France, Rodia, Solvay. And then uh, part owners of Thorenity, Statoil, the Norwegian oil company, and uh, STL from South Africa. The experiment takes place in the Halden reactor. The Halden reactor is inside a mountain. This garage door is on the side. Inside here is the big reactor hall. On top of this mountain, there's uh, houses. And it's located right in the middle of the center. It's a 50 megawatt, uh, a 50, uh, kilo, uh, 50 megawatt uh, reactor. It has operated since 1958. It's used exclusively to test and license and verify fuel for heavy water reactors and for light water reactors. And I know many in the audience know this reactor very well. Uh, this is where we uh, place our fuel. So I'll go through the program a little bit, try to show you some pictures of real things, not just visions of uh, paper studies and where we're going. Fuel fabrication program. There is many variants of uh, thorium oxide fuel to go into light water reactors. Uh, I won't go into uh, a lot of detail. Thorium additive option, replacing gadolinium and existing UOX pellets by putting thorium in there instead. Has some neutronic and material property benefits for sure. Minimizing plutonium use, breeding 233, or maximizing plutonium, uh, you know, to try to destroy as much of the plutonium as possible. Very politically correct, but technically and economically not a very good idea. But, uh, of course, then using as little plutonium as possible. So two variants of thorium plutonium oxide. High burn-up fuels in new claddings, silicon carbide claddings. Uh, second generation plutonium recovered from MOX bundles. And then, of course, thorium-233. All oxide variants that can go into a light water reactor. We don't aim to develop and test all of them, but we have manufactured and produced and are testing the top three. We started our uh, real hands-on work in 2009 with the Los Alamos National Lab. So we made 12 small babies of thorium-cerium pellets using cerium as a surrogate for plutonium, developing our recipe continued to play with this recipe in Norway at the IFE Fuel Fabrication Lab and made a very good thorium cerium pellets using cerium as a surrogate for plutonium. Then we produced the first pellets that have now gone into the reactor. This is thorium, real thorium. This is 93% uh, uranium with 7% thorium, 97% density. 
uh, uh, very, uh, very good fuel that is now instrumented and in the reactor producing power and producing results of looking at this thorium additive option, this very, very lowest hanging fruit of thorium introduction. And I think thorium, in a way, is a binary question. Is thorium being used in the fuel cycle? Yes or no? This small step is a yes for thorium into the nuclear fuel cycle, and that is an ambition in itself. Second batch of pellets is 40% uh, thorium, 60% uranium. This is to benchmark our experiment to a lot of the historic experiments that you've seen on the screen many times yesterday. All the light water experiments in the past is basically using uranium as the fissile component. So we need to reference our, our uh, experiment to that. Happy campers with the first fuel, our CTO, Dr. Kelly, and the uh, uh, rest of the team producing the first pellets in the lab. Then ITU provided uh, the first set of thorium-plutonium pellets, uh, you know, also used in the Obrigheim irradiation, and this way we can reference our experiment to the uh, previous light water irradiations of thorium-plutonium. But a very exotic way of making pellets. So we uh, now go to the next phase of the program. Yeah, the, here are the four of the six rods. We have manufactured six rods of, of uh, 60 centimeter length, uh, they're instrumented and in the reactor now. This is four of them. This is uh, experiment 730 pin number two. So here are the four of the pellet stacks, three variants of fuel. Uh, the way we drill them, instrumented with uh, the center line thermocouple, welded up the rods. And uh, we go through four fa uh, three phases in the experiment. The first phase is now in the uh, reactor. The next phase is now manufacturing thorium-plutonium pins in Norway in a new alpha lab that we have made. We have the material available now, and we will be making uh, a set of pellets that will go now go into the reactor in April 2014 as well. And we're doing a lot of dry testing now. This is just from last week's production. These are thorium cerium pellets, 67 theoretic density after pressing, and now going into the sintering as we speak this week, uh, indicating above 95% uh, theoretical density in uh, the pellets will now go into the uh, reactor in April. That's what thorium looks like. We've built an alpha lab in Norway. It's now complete, this uh, laboratory. With the glove boxes is a brand new lab that we built together with IFA. It is to produce plutonium bearing fuels strictly dedicated to thorium oxide based fuels. Normally it takes 10 years to license such a thing. We have licensed it and uh, commission, are commissioning it now in December and we start production in January. Here are the glove boxes in the workshop just uh, before they go into the lab itself. We've got a ball mill, we've got a sintering press, we've got a grinding machine, a sintering oven, we can sinter at all, times, all types of atmospheres. It mimics an uh, industrial type pellet manufacturing line and it's brand new. And we uh, now will make our first thorium plutonium pellets next quarter and load that, those into the reactor uh, again. So that's what we do on fuel fabrication. Now a little bit on the irradiation campaign. I'm not watching my time. Am I in trouble? No. So the test rig, again, uh, Dr. Kelly and Jura. Here is uh, the start of the test rig. This is a, a common type test rig that Halden uses a lot. When testing fuel, you apply either the cook and look method, where you make fuel, put it in a reactor, close your eyes, and then take it out and look at it afterwards, or you do it the Holden way, the instrumented way, where you can read and monitor a lot of parameters on the fuel as we speak, uh, as it burns online. So this rig has about 40 signals cables coming out of the six pins, where we are able to uh, measure center line temperature, surface temperature, pressure in the rod, all online during operation. It provides data about the material that doesn't really exist today. We've heard about exotic variants of thorium plutonium. We heard about thorium uranium, but an industrial type thorium plutonium pellet. This is the first time. This rig is alone 1 million euros laying there on the table. Here all the six pins are installed. 
This happened uh, early April uh, this year. Here it's out of the hot water test loop, so the zirconium has gone purple, as it does with the heat. These are Westinghouse standard circle oil claddings on all the six pins. Here's the active part of it. That's the last time we'll be that close to the thorium. Here it goes into the reactor. And on 25th of April 2013, we loaded our rig into the reactor. Six pins of three variants of thorium oxide fuel. Here is a picture of the, the tall rig laying there and the top of the Holden reactor lid. It goes into a light water uh, condition test loop. Uh, so we, we test under commercial conditions. We loaded, this is the central line temperature reading. We loaded on a Friday. 70 degrees is the cold state of Holden. On Saturday evening, they started pulling control rods out. And on Monday, two and a half days, power from thorium. That's uh, energy, uh, heat, heat generated in the center of the pellets. So we were quite happy to see that. We got some good uh, press on this event. The Telegraph, WNN, and then television. And uh, BBC is uh, broadcasting actually on Thursday, on the same time as the panel debate on thorium being loaded into the reactor. And uh, NRK, the Norwegian state uh, television, this has had some impact, and I'll get back to that in the very last slide. So now we're at about 100 days of burning in the reactor. And we're generating a lot of results all the time that are being recorded and shared in this consortium of entities supporting this. Uh, we have collected a lot of uh, data. We are collecting on, as I said, center temperature, rod pressure. And we're, you know, uh, a, a good experiment is a very boring experiment because it will behave exactly as predicted. And that's what we're hoping for, to show thermal conductivity is better, to show fission gas release is less. So all, what we really hope to do is produce really no new crazy data about thorium, just to predict that it, it is just those marginal better than, than uranium oxide while it's in the reactor. So we are, of course, plotting the data results constantly to uh, previous uh, you know, calculated models of uh, fuel temperatures and all that. Uh, you know, one, of the, one, uh, one feature that we really like to see is just this top graph here. The purple line on top is uh, standard UOX fuel. It's a reference fuel pin that we have in there. The two graphs below is just adding 7% to this uranium oxide pellet. And it lowers the center line temperature by 5 to 10%. And that's 5 to 10% increase in safety margins. This is the thorium additive option. It shows that uh, just by adding 7% to the uranium as a gadolinium replacement option, you get a neutron value and also a material property value. Yeah, here's uh, just some plots on fuel temperature against calculated plots where the colored is uh, calculated and the black dots are measured. So we see it's a boring experiment, but a great experiment. <laughs> it takes time. And uh, Luke from Arriva pointed this out to us earlier today. It really takes time to uh, introduce new technologies in the nuclear field. And there's a good reason for that, because we must be cautious. This is very, very difficult. Everybody in this room wants to achieve thorium nirvana very quickly. It's very, very difficult. And we have to move slowly in many ways. Of course, we want to move fast, but we need to make sure it's safe, it's proven, it's economical. It takes a long time. Developing just, just changing that little pellet from uranium oxide to thorium plutonium oxide is a big thing, and it takes a long time will be irradiating in the Holden reactor until early 2017. Then we will make some full-length rods that goes into a commercial reactor in early 2018. And then hopefully, one or two years after, be allowed by a regulatory body to load a LTA, lead test assembly, in a commercial reactor. And then a very gradual rollout of feeding some thorium-plutonium bundles inside existing light water cores. So it's a long lead item, and this is, again, just changing the fuel, comp the pellet composition, and all the other uh, hardware is the same. 
So all of you that are out developing a completely new reactor, a completely new fuel machine, a completely new reprocessing technology, good luck. It takes time. One of the last slides, this is partially in Norwegian. One month ago, the Norwegian government, uh, there was a national election in Norway. New government is in place, very conservative, blue-blue government. It's coalition between the dark blue and the blue. Uh, the boss is our new Angela Merkel, Arna Solberg, this uh, lady. They, uh, the new government uh, sat in a resort in the mountains thinking for one week, how do we define the strategy of Norway for the next four years? And in a 28-page document, they define virtually everything and anything on health care and everything. And in that document, under chapter 13, environment and climate, establish a research center for thorium. It was a big and important commitment by a small Norwegian government. And uh, we are quite used to being involved in these FME centers. Uh, there's one big one on solar in Norway, and we're engaged in that in the family of companies. And of course, there's a place for industry in uh, such a research center. And the industry, the thorium industry in Norway can be counted on one finger today. So we, we, we have great expectations for that. Very positive surprise, and I think we can thank, thank you, Egil, also for inflicting some of that and inviting some of these politicians down to this excellent site. So that's a recent good uh, announcement, uh, and we're happy to be part of that. Yeah, so I'm uh, sort of at the end. That's our rig there. We are working hard on making this a reality. Uh, we are developing technology, supporting technology in software and bundle design and pellet design. We are seeking more members into our consortium. So if you would like to be part of this group and share some of these results, yeah, you are hereby invited. And uh, I think that's it, 7.30, the evolution of Thorium. Uh, you know, this, uh, while fabricating this thoria plutonia for the radiation testing, have you set up, you know, fixed some sort of benchmark for accepting the pellets for radiation testing? Absolutely. We spent three years making our pellet specification, which is, of course, relating a lot to uh, MOX fuel qualification, uh, which, you know, has been done in many countries of the world. So, so yes, there's a very comprehensive pellet specification so first of all, just to go into the Halden reactor, but of course also to be industrially applicable and commercially applicable. So that's a very detailed spec. Yes. There is another one just there, if you can give the mic to him. My question is not a scientific, much, much more legal issue. I would like to know and learn how a private company can work with the plutonium and uh, other nuclear materials? Are your laboratories subject to IAE inspections or uh, is, a, is a part of government institute you are? IFE is the government research institution in Norway. They have operated for 50 years. Uh, and uh, material ownership is purely in their hands. We, we, are, we are just a customer of the results, no ownership at all. Uh, so IFE has imported and exported uh, all sorts of fissile material and all sorts of spent fuel for 50 years. And being in Norway and being state-owned, it's considered quite safe, even by Hans, I think. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, that this is completely out of our hands uh, as a private company. Only the results we, uh, we own. It is an international recognized test lab. So, it, yeah. so Carlo. I have a simple question for you. Uh, what is the energy spectrum in the Holden reactor? Is it thermal spectrum or is it epithermal? What thermal spectrum. Thermal. 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 Yeah. So fully thermal. It's fully thermal. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
It's, it's a heavy water moderated, light water cooled reactor. Very yes, much like, like the Indian reactor. Yes. I, I, yeah. I can see that there are many, many, many hands up and we are not going to uh, give the microphone to everybody. So uh, it, only the most pressing questions and you can certainly discuss with him uh, later on. So. Can, can you give us an idea how much it costs to fabricate the different types of fuel rods that you're making? There, there's no reason to think that uh, it, it is absolutely not harder to make these p pins than to make our regular MOX pin today at all. So that's our reference mark. M MOX fuel has been used commercially in many markets today, and the primary introduction of thorium plutonium MOX is in the MOX nations of today. And the way to produce this is ex exactly the same as uh, thorium MOX, to put it very simplified. Same type of equipment and everything. Just uh, one technical question. You showed us you will go up to 2017 irradiation. What will be the burn-up you will reach? And after that, before entering the LTA test, are you foreseeing transients testing in the Halden uh, on this? Yeah, in January 2017, we have between 55 and 60 gigawatt days of accumulated burn-up. So it's a commercial cycle. And of course, we have to do transient tests. I mean, local testing is, uh, is uh, very often done in Halden. You know, you make special flask and you take irradiated fuel and burst it. So such transients is, is part of uh, the program at the end. I, I have a question about this low moderation system that you are thinking about for future. Mm -hmm. Are you working on that uh, in particular? We are a small company. Introducing thorium is a big elephant that we have to eat. We try to chew a small piece of it. But there are other very strong forces working on reduced moderation light water reactors. Mm -hmm. Industry is working on it. Uh, very esteemed professors in the US that I know that you know are working on this. We are supporting that work. We are funding part of that work. Okay. We, are, we are following it very closely, but not, we, we don't own that work, no. Okay. See, there is a hand behind there. You have to know for a long time. Uh, I've had a number of people... Um, Can you give your name? Uh, it's Aidan Peekman. I've, I've had a number of people uh, say that the internal oxidation um, uh, with thorium uh, MOX fuel uh, versus normal uranium oxide fuel may be quite different. So I was wondering if it, when you plan to get results on the internal oxidation of the clad. We will cut the pins open and do a PAE analysis on that. Uh, I'm not technical enough to know that if we do check in uh, that, I must say. Uh, we, I have part of my technical team here, we can talk about that, of course. But uh, yes, we do PAE on these pins afterwards, and also halfway through. It's part of the program. Other hands? Um, Frank Commissioner, send this from uh, France. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation of actual results. And actually, um, my question is on those results. Any chance they will be shared with the community in some, for example, international uh, database such as the OECD and EA? Yeah, as I said, this is a very expensive undertaking. And uh, those that share the bill share the results as it is today. But of course, when this fuel is commercially introduced. Regulatory bodies, utilities, fuel vendors all have to share this data. This is, you know, it's in the physics books of the world of uranium oxide fuel, this knowledge. But as of now, it is not in the open literature. Eventually, it has to become that. But now it is not openly available. Well, I see no more hands. So thank you again for a very nice presentation.